I request all of you for a moment to think about a house, a house which does not have power connection, which does not have water connection, which does not even have a sewer connection. Well, what will our brain visualize? Most of us may think that this kind of house would exist only in forest or on a mountain top. And we would also conclude that to stay in a house like this, we will have to give up all our modern amenities. And whoever is staying in this house may be poor or a monk. But well, what if I tell you that such a house exists in one of the fastest developing cities of the world, and that is our city, Surat. And this house does have all the modern amenities, and it is also a very sustainable house with very small carbon footprint. Well, let me tell you something about how I got hooked to this uh, love of nature and conservation. Well, it all began when I was a young boy, hardly 8 to 10 years old. Our parents used to take us all into the nearby forest area, Dang. That time it was not a tourist attraction. We used to camp over there on the riverside, collect firewood, light a fire and cook our own food. And at night we used to sleep just on the riverside or on the top of the hills. And during daytime we were exploring the waterfalls, jumping into the river, learning about the wildlife birds, insects, animals found in that forest. And that is how gradually I got hooked to nature. And this remained with me throughout my life. And the same thing I continue even with my children. We all go to uh, locations like forest and mountains during our holidays. And gradually my love for nature increased even when I was studying uh, in South India during my engineering. I used to spend all my holidays in the nearby Western Ghat mountains exploring nature over there. When I came back to this city, I found this city very dull. With the help of two other friends, we formed a small NGO, Nature Club Surat. And through this NGO, we started activities in schools and colleges of our cities. And gradually we had a volunteer force who was ready to protect whatever was left in our city. If there were any trees to be cut, we used to transplant them and take care of them. We used to save natural places around our city and that is how we started one of our projects, which is Gavir Wetland Conservation Project. And we started around 12 years back. We planted around 2,000 trees on the surrounding of this lake. And now they are all full, full grown. They attract a lot of birds and butterflies over here. It has become a natural paradise for our city. One of our other projects is deer breeding project in the Vashda National Park, which is located in South Gujarat. Over here, we are breeding deers and releasing them back into the wild. And that is how we are trying to balance the ecology of the forest. Well, this was not enough for me. I wanted to do something more. I wanted to live a more sustainable life and for that I thought even the house 
should be a sustainable house. As I was studying nature for last 35, 40 years, and with my engineering background, I knew that technology existed to make a sustainable house. I had observed in nature that nothing is wasted. Even if a leaf falls down, it will become manure and new trees can grow through it. If an animal dies, other animal insects or carnivores will eat them. That is how the natural food cycle goes on and nothing is wasted. So I thought, why not build a house where I don't need any electricity from outside, no water from outside and no sewer connection. There was a lot of rainfall in our area. Why can't we catch this water? There is a lot of sunlight and wind. Why can't we harvest it? And just by observing the natural cycle, how it purifies water, we can treat the wastewater going out from our house. And all this concept I have put into my house. Whenever we are planning to make our own house, our dream house, normally we think that it should be a lavish house, centrally AC house, automatic curtains, automatic doors, Italian marble, imported furniture, but well, that will not fit my idea of a sustainable house. And the house I built is very sustainable. Let us have a view of the house. When I say there is no power connection, well, there is power in my house. And as you can see, it is all through solar panel and wind. We are producing enough power to run all the modern gadgets in our house, as well as electric motor, etc. Also, we have windmill to pump out water from the ground, and this water is used in our property. Here you can see we have solar panels on the house. The roof of the house is designed in such a way that solar panels can be directly fitted on the roof. There are water sprinkler on the top so that cleaning of the solar panels will be done automatically. Also, you can see the construction of our uh, house interior. There are many large windows so that natural light will come in and we don't have to use artificial light. And all the lighting fixtures in the house are very energy efficient. They are LED based. Also the electrical gadgets are all five star rated so that minimum power is consumed. The walls of the house are hollow. They are called red trap wall. And the air in this cavity acts as insulation. Whatever amount of sunlight falls from outside, inside it will remain cool. And in winter, the inside of the house remains warm. Also, we have strategically planted trees on the east and west side of the house from where a lot of sunlight will come on the house. And the plants which are selected are such that they will have leaf during summer. So direct sunlight will not hit the house. And during winter, the leaf will fall down. So sunlight can touch the walls of the house and house remains warm. Right inside our house, we have a small pond between our living area and sleeping area. And during summer, due to heat, the water will evaporate and this cool air, which is evaporating from the pond, is sucked into our house by special fans which are provided in each room. Cool air will enter our, our house. Our house roof are sloping. Hot air will go to the top and there are exhaust fitted over there. 
so hot air will go out and this is how water is helping to keep our house cool as well as in the water there are fish and lilies which is keeping the water clean we don't have to use any chemicals to keep this water clean also the roof of our house where there are no solar panels we are using green curtains there are creepers on all our roof this will not allow direct sunlight to touch our roof and our rooms are 5 degrees cooler than the surrounding this is our natural ac we don't have ac in our house as far as water we are trying to collect all the water which which falls on our house there are few tanks located on the top of our living area water from the sloping roof will come into this tanks first during the monsoon four months we have rain water collected into this tanks and as our living area is below this tanks just by gravity we are getting water into our house we don't have to pump the water up every time once those tanks are full remaining water will go down through a filter that is also a natural filter sand gravel charcoal it will remove all the impurities and then on the ground floor we have a solid water tank which is uh, having storage capacity of 2 lakh liter this water is sufficient for us throughout the year and if we have any surplus water after the rain water tanks are full the surplus water is diverted into the ground thus no water is wasted and we don't need any water from any other source also in our house we don't have any ro filter for purifying the water as such we have rain water plus we you all know that uh, ro water is wasting lot of water at the same time it is consuming power but my filter which is a five pot filter which we are using since last 10 years you just fill up the water on the top there are small holes at the bottom water will percolate from the top one to the second one which is having marble chips or limestone water will pass through this just like in nature when the water is flowing from mountains it is absorbing different minerals and in the third chamber there is coconut cell charcoal charcoal will kill all the bacteria viruses or any foul smell in the water then it goes into the next pot which is having very fine sand this will filter out any dust particle in the water and then it goes into the bottom most pot where there is a small silver coin silver will improve the longevity a uh, storing capacity of the water water will not get spoiled for long time and copper itself is also adding minerals to the water thus we are getting very good mineral rich water a normal ro filter will just remove all the essential minerals from the water it will also consume power it will waste water but that i have avoided also the water which is leaving our house like there are uh, two outlets of water from my house one outlet is only for the bathing water and the wash basin water which is passing through this three tub method of water cleaning this i have learned from nature the first tub is having sand and some aquatic plants like kenna all the particles like uh, soap or hair they will get trapped in the sand bed and kenna is a very good plant for cleaning water after that the water enters the second tub where there are water hyacinths 
water hyacinth is a plant which will absorb all harmful elements from the water and it will clean the water in the last tub there are water umbrella and lily pond lily plants this plant will also enhance the water quality and add oxygen into the water and to determine whether this water is clear or not there are fish in this third chamber if the fish remains alive you will know that the water is clean enough and this water is used into our vegetable garden also the washing machine water which is normally 200 liters we collect it and use it for toilet flushing thus we don't need fresh water for toilet flushing and we are saving 25 to 30 percent of new water and after the toilet is flushed the water which goes out is black water and this is passing through settling tank there are three chambers in the settling tank all solid will settle down and liquid will come again into a root bed treatment where there is sand and aquatic plants like canna they will purify the water and it again goes into our kitchen garden thus no water is wasted the land area where we have built our house 25 years ago there was not a single tree but now there are more than 700 trees which are more than 25 feet high and there are about 150 different variety of indigenous trees also around 30 variety of fruit trees are planted over here and all this made a small ecosystem which attracted lot of birds butterflies over here and these are our neighbors we see them out of our windows we have peacock dancing on our top of the house we have sparrows we have different kind of birds and butterflies always present in our premises as far as the building is concerned we have avoided plaster and paint on the wall why because paint is a synthetic material and it keeps on emitting fumes for very long time and this fumes are being inhaled by all the people staying inside the house we don't realize this but this is poison for our lungs and the paint life of the paint is hardly 5 years again we repaint again we have new fumes going into our body so we have just avoided it in the walls of the house we have deliberately kept small holes with cavity inside it for the birds to nest and this i learned when the house was under construction there were scaf scaffoldings when the bamboos were removed from it birds started nesting into those holes so then i deliberately created holes in my walls and now there are sparrows manas parrots living into my walls and my walls are living walls i have not used italian marble or granite why although i could have afforded it but it would come all the way from italy the amount of pollution it will create while transportation i did not want to do that i have used the nearest possible material kota stone in flooring exposed bricks which are made in our own state stones from our own state thus the emissions while bringing the raw material while manufacturing that raw material even we have considered about emissions caused by this material even the curtains are from jute 
which is an organic material which can be composted once its life is over. Also, the furniture in our house is from renewable material like cane, bamboo and cotton upholstery. None of the furniture is imported. It is all local, made by our local craftsmen. All the driveway in our premises are not having paver blocks or RCC because we want the water to percolate into the ground and keep our soil moist and it will help in increasing the greenery. Also the contour of our premises is such that we have made a lake in middle of our premises. All the water which is not falling on our roof but in our land area is diverted into a pond and from this pond it goes down into the earth. Thus water is recharged. Also the mode of transport I am using is an electric car and no doubt electric car also needs power. But my power is coming from the solar panels on top of my roof, not from a polluting uh, power source like a thermal power house. In conclusion, I will like to talk about uh, global warming. We all know about global warming and we also think that global warming is not done by us. It is done by the forest cutting going on in some remote countries, by the polluting industries. We don't do it. But well, how many of us do not use tissue paper? How many of us do not use a disposable water bottle? How many of us do not use a gasoline powered two wheeler or a four wheeler? Well, we all use all this. And this is also contributing to global pollution and emissions. And in the last 125 years since industrialization started, we have emitted so much emission that our planet has warmed up by one degree, just one degree. But we can see the result of it. Forest fire in USA, forest fire in Australia, forest fire in Siberia. Siberian forest, they had temperatures below freezing. But in last few years, the temperature has started rising to plus 10 degree, plus 15 degree. And forest fires have started in Siberia, which was never heard of. Also, now it is time for all of us to think about global warming. Like I have done whatever I can and try to implement all the uh, eco-sensitive or ecologically uh, good principles into <coughs> this building. And I would request, as this is our fastest developing city, a lot of you may be building your own house or industry or institute. We should try to make it as ecologically possible. Uh, it should have less carbon footprint. And it is time to join the race to save this planet. As the Mahatma of our country, Gandhiji has said, be the change you want to see in this world. And that is what I am living. Not now it is time for you to join in this race.